Today we have a Honda Harmony, Harmony 215, and the problem with this machine is that uh, the pull cord is not retracting. It's in okay condition. Front wheels I'm not too worried about. Rear wheels could be better. So yeah, but the price was right. It was like 20 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. The dude lived about 45 minutes away from my house, but I was already driving on the way home from a different project, I'll just put it that way. And this was on my way. I stopped to pick it up, 20 bucks, boom, done, here we are. Now, when you see machines like this, I don't really like these, because I've had to deal with so many transmission problems, but for the price, I couldn't help it. Having said that, when you were dealing with a pulled or broken recoil, 95% of the time, you're not just gonna work on a recoil, you're gonna be working on the carburetor. Why? Because you're not just, why would you have to pull it so many times? Or more importantly, if a person were to be angry and pull it, let's say hard or a little faster than usual or anything, why are they doing that to break the recoil? It's because it's not starting. Yeah, we've all been there, but, I say the first thing to do is take a look at that recoil. So this recoil is pretty much the same as a commercial version. In fact, the one with the steel blower on it waiting for its owner to come and pick it up. Exact same piece. This is a real gamble because this recoil by itself will have you guess how much it is. I'll give you a moment. You're wrong. It's $92 the last time I checked. $92 dollars think about that what about this is 92 dollars besides honda pocketing the extra cash and just laughing at you having said that two ten or excuse me three ten millimeters and we should be good oh my god i don't even know what to say so i was sitting here and i took off the three ten millimeters didn't want to come off so i pried it up a little bit and literally it popped out and landed where you're looking at it. Look at that in there. That's disgusting. But that's only the first part. That. Oh my god. That is nasty. Uh, the good news is that $92 part that's probably 20 cents to make is um, retracting. As you can tell, it's not retracting very well, and the piece of plastic right here is broken. So, at the very least, we're gonna have to replace that. You can buy those parts. It's a little hard to find them sometimes. I'm gonna spend a couple moments and take a look and see if I can. If not, this machine might be getting tossed in the trash. My apologies on having to look at a screen, but this is the part that we need. It's $24.99 plus shipping. It's on partstree.com. I don't really think this is the best website, just the first one that came up. But something that I did want to oops, show you is the whole thing actually is more expensive. It's $139.99. That's crazy. And this part is exactly what we need. And it comes with the spring, pulley and spring assembly. Well, pulley and spring. So, we are going to be waiting for a little bit. I'm going to see if I can type in this part number 28415-Z as in Z, E as in Echo, 6-T as in Tango. Uh, I think that's a 0, 2. Yeah, 0. And um, hopefully we can get that taken care of a little earlier because this one is about five to six days out for the cheap shipping cheap shipping for these websites if you don't know means i'm going to take four days to send it to you it's maybe i don't know a week or so later we have a part where's the part number 28415-ze6 t02 We're going to double check, make sure it's okay, but from what I've seen so far, it does appear like it is. And the good thing is, this one has 
the spring already inside of it. So that's nice. So this is the top side and it would be like this so far. Looks to be fine. Okay. What we are going to need to do though, we're going to take off this top part and clean this out a little bit. The unfortunate part about all this is we need to drive it out through there. If I was smart, I'd be soaking this a while ago and making it a little easier on myself, but I wasn't. I'm going to go ahead and take a like a quarter inch driver or something, kind of just pound on in there. You can sometimes take like a screw, big bolt. It just needs to be this exactly the same width as this little pin. Can kind of see it's flared up there a little bit. And the whole thing just comes out and this piece comes off and we'll switch it over. So I'm gonna get pounding on that and we'll see what happens. Okay, and there we have it. It's been taken apart. That just goes on the top. But there are a couple pieces we need to take care of first. There's little springs in there. We need to make sure that we take them. Now, the top fell out when you pound it through. When you pound it, here, let me show you. I personally just put it in my vise, face down, whole center falls out through the center, that's it. Now we have our spring. I just put it in the corresponding section of the new one. As soon as I take it out, that way I don't forget it. These hold the little dogs in place. And, oh yeah, I didn't show you those. That's what these are. I think I might actually give this a little bit of a cleaning too while we're at it. So there's a very high likelihood of this spring going boing. Oh, didn't. No boing. But this whole section is garbage. We don't need to fiddle with this. Now, you can, if this spring is broken, just buy the spring. But when I was looking at it, it wasn't all that much more expensive just to buy this whole assembly. Which is a whole lot less expensive than buying the whole thing pre-done. Not 100% sure why. Because, I mean, technically... Uh oh. Just dropped the springs. Yeah, let me look and see where those fell. Okay. Now, we take a look. The little piece is right there. And that has to fit in here. Make sure that's not oblonged at all. And it appears like it's not. So. Just line it up. Does this not come with it? Oh, I thought it did. Apparently it does not. Just keeps it lubed. Okay. There we have it. It caught. Now, we can go back to getting this completed. Wipe my hands real quick here. There's definitely some grease on that piece. We're going to take the spring, which fell out, but they just slip right in place. for it to sit. That little gap in there, or cut out, holds the spring in place. Now when we put the dogs in, we have to move the spring arm out a little bit. I'll show you when we get closer to that. But, we'll put the dogs in now. Really hard to see, but I'll show you what it looks like after. 
mainly because my hands are kind of in the way. I know, I know. There we go. So, I don't know if you can tell, but that part of the spring is on the outside. This is actually holding the whole spring down, but when it moves, it wants to go back to its little home position. Moving forward. So now, we are going to take that. So, at this point, I don't really want to hit it too hard. You're going to shake, so I'm going to apologize. And I apologize for my constant neighbor's car. There. Now it's being held into place. I'm going to put this back on the vise, and I'm going to just tap it back down, and I'll show you where it needs to sit. And there we have it. So, it's not flush but it's definitely underneath the level of this plate. But the easiest way is to kind of tell, there's maybe a millimeter, the shaft sticking out from the bottom or the base of it. What is that like? 16th of an inch, something like that. So now at this point, I'm gonna get some line and then we will get it wound up. Here's the other end, it's the handle we're gonna take the dirtiest screwdriver you can find and pull that out that comes right out this also comes right out so when I chose the amount of line I mean you could measure it and bring out your calculator or get pi out and all kinds of stuff or you could just measure the line that came out of it but you know we're simple here now we need to first make sure that everything is good to go. Now, I forgot to mention, but when you pound this in, these little holes need to be on the inside of these little dogs. If they're not and they're on the outside, or you did it wrong, you're going to take it apart. So as long as you can do this, you're pretty good. So now, I'm going to wind this up. Mowers, it's about five to six um, pull, uh, turns. Then I'm going to hold it down and then I'll bring it back. So I spun the center piece around six times with the dogs out. That way you know you're doing it the right way. Now I took a piece of line, just Oregon line, simple. Torched the end of it. That way it's not all frayed out. Now, this is the hard part. This doesn't have holes in it, so I can't really shove like a screwdriver or anything through it and hold it in place, but usually this isn't all that hard, but when you only have one hand, and you're used to having two. Makes it a little more difficult. I guess that's why we have teeth. Okay, now we're gonna tip that little end bend. Make sure it stays in there. Perfect, now. Just gonna do a quick little knot here. Or not. Ah. Eh, whatever. Man, this new spring is really springy. Ah, no, that doesn't work either. We might just have to do this the difficult way. Or I just tie a quick, oh my god, 
The spring is just something else. Okay. Finally got the knot that I was looking for. There we go. Now we take our stacking, we take our line, shove it through the rubber piece, and then we take the line and go through the metal piece, and we do our pull cord knot. If you are unaware, mine is you have a little extra, you go under, around, and then through again. It just kind of adds like an extra loop. I'm sure it has a name and I don't know what it is. I call it the pull cord knot. If you know what it is, leave a comment. I'm not a Boy Scout, so I don't really know. Okay, now we can undo our knot. This should retract pretty much all the way, and it does. Oh. Wow. Okay. Perfect. So, I'm going to get it back installed. This goes on the top, and then we will give it a pull. I'm sure we have carburetor problems, but I have a video dedicated to only Honda carburetors. Follow that video if you need a little assistance. And we'll um, see if this uh, fixes the problem. One other small tidbit, whenever you see stuff like this, this, this like markings are staining, it's almost always because of fuel. Could be other things, don't get me wrong, but a lot of times it's because the fuel was leaking and it kind of stained the deck. So this is also kind of a dead giveaway that there's a problem with the carburetor. And the reason why someone's got to pull on it so much and probably with a decent amount of anger behind it, it's because it's not starting. At least that would be my, assumption. Here's something interesting, actually a couple things. One, I cleaned out the top. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was. Two, this is the fuel shutoff, but there's no like nozzle or anything. So you end up having to do a little handle or a knob on the handle and it actually shuts it off for you. That is off, that's on. Off, and I'm sure you get the point. In addition to that, see this little cutout? When the carbs put together or the machines put together, I kind of look at that, I wonder why, so the carb can come out. This is too much, too high, and the bowl would actually get stuck, so they just carved it out. Interesting little idea. After looking at that bowl, I can understand why it wasn't starting for the, for the guy, and there's no fuel in it. There is fuel in it now. Oil's good. Spark plug is actually brand new. I don't know if I even had to, well, no, I did have to, never mind. But, let's see here. Put that back. Now we are on choke. Everything appears to be retracting and moving fine. For whatever reason, I thought there was a clutch on this. So I was usually when there's a throttle, we go all the way back. It turns off. My mind is somewhere else right now. Anyway, it runs. The bowl was completely trashed, so it's been there for a while. So that's why there's a little oil be to be burned. I'm not too concerned over that. But other than that, if you have a broken recoil on one of these machines, definitely consider doing this. It's a relatively inexpensive part and if I wasn't filming, hmm, maybe 20 minutes, if that. That's if you're having a really hard time driving out that center pin. But to be honest, I just took a old beat up quarter inch driver, pounded it, and it slid right out. Now, you do have to be careful not to bend the actual whole housing, but as long as you're just pushing on the pin, then you, don't, you pretty much don't have to worry about it. I didn't even put uh, WD-40 in there. Came right out. 
And with that being said, I'm going to leave you at that. Follow me on Instagram at smallinja101. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment. Or if you have any other machines and this thing quite um, fulfill your question, leave a comment anyway. I'd be happy to help. We have a model number and yeah, I'll be happy to see what's going on. See you in the next one. Feel free to subscribe. Have a good night. Put a thumbs up. Helps me a lot. See you later.